<laughs> Hi, everybody. Ooh. There you go. Hi, and welcome. I'm Matthew, the College Railroader. Today, I want to talk about another top tip when working with confined space. And one of the biggest tips and most important tip is knowing what layout theme you're looking for. Um, now, these themes can definitely be more abstract um, in terms of what specifically you want to go inside those themes. And that's what's kind of the um, brilliance of model railroading is when there are no such thing as two identical themes. So what I mean by theme is, you know, what kind of style are you looking for for these layouts? For example, do you want a big city with long passenger trains? Do you want a countryside with small locomotives? Or do you want a freight yard with lots of switch tracks and great big diesels pushing such cars? The joy with having these different uh, themes is that you can kind of manipulate them how you want to, and you can kind of design them your own way. Like I said before, no two layouts are built the same, and no two themes are designed the same as well. That's kind of the beauty of working also in confined spaces. You, as the railroader, can kind of put your own spin on what you want your theme and layout to run and operate. And many people also think that you can only have one theme. And yes, it's true that some layouts like to keep it to one theme or time period. That's not the case though. And I'll show you with my own layout. Follow me on a little tour. So the best spot is where I'm gonna show you where the layout begins is where, you know, most trains start their day, which is right by the roundhouse. So as I show you a quick tour, how we built the layout is we have the train going underneath this area right over here by the little, um, yard work area, rear wheel construction, I guess you could say, as they're working on a couple of old trains. We go down this bridge over here, and as it comes down and around, right, going up through, um, way up over here, right, it's gonna come up on top. Now you get to the city, right? And so now on this uh, side, you know, we've um, delegated or designated, uh, you know, half the layout and half the room is just to this great city alone. And so, like I said before, you know, how to tie them all together. So when the train kind of comes up, bam, you're right at the city, you're right at the station, it kind of moves along. And as it's slowly starting to go away, that now big city is now slowly turning into residential. It's now moving into more of a, um, a freight car depot, the big church, you know, come goes over here. You have the big switch houses right over here. And so as you go around, you know, there's an older um, area over here that we're still working on, as you can see. But, you know, there's also this older abandoned depot, as you can see, kind of gives your layout like, you know, oh, it used to be over here. Now it moved closer. So now you're kind of behind the big city, behind all the buildings. So what's really nice is when you have a train going by, you can get nice shots of the train rushing through. Now it turns back over here. Uh, now it starts to become back industrial. Now the train's going over uh, the freight yard, right? And it, as it comes turning around, it will then go back down. So now the train, when running down, right, it comes down on these two tracks, heading back down, turns itself around, and it ends up in that same direction that New York Central is going. It now goes this way, turns around on the bottom, 
right where all the freight cars are and ends up right where the Pennsylvania train was. So as you can see, and besides giving a little tour of what my layout is, all three themes have been combined all in one. And I'll show you when I take a step back even more, right? Almost practically exiting my room. You can totally see, there's the bridge, the covered bridge, the drawbridge that we saw earlier. You could see the industrial sides right over here with the roundhouse, the turntable, and also you see the um, switch tracks and freight yard. Then it comes underneath and on top and goes through the big city. And then off to the side, it starts slowly becoming more country-like and more nature. And so you can do more of these different themes and different mashups together of which two themes do you want together. You can just do a city. You could just do a switchyard. Many different layouts do what, you know, many different railroaders do whatever they want to do because they love the freedom of deciding where they want it. And also in terms of space, you need a certain, you can only do a certain amount of themes and you can only um, allocate so much track space, especially in terms of buildings. For example, this entire part of the layout right here, we could have leveled all this wood out and just did a massive freight yard, right? With long tracks and freight cars and everything. But then, you know, where would the city go? Would it be over here now in this smaller area? There's a lot to consider when making great layouts, regardless of how much space you have. It's really the matter of how much track space are you willing to use up on your table in order to then accommodate for other buildings and other nature scenes. So knowing what your theme is and what you're trying to do with your tracks and how much track space you allocate um, will then greatly help you uh, to really start diving deep into how you're going to actually build the layout. Um, another thing to really consider is draw it out, make a track plan. That's what the terminology is of when you're designing or having a bird's eye view of what your layout should look like, could look like, will look like. Um, and, it, you know, it changes every day you know, of what you want to do. And, you know, after you test out or lay down a piece of track and you see how good it looks, you run a couple of trains over it and all of a sudden you realize, you know, oh, one of the cars can't go over it because the radius is too short. So you go back into it and then you tweak it, you make it longer, then it affects the other track. So you, there's a lot that builds up and snowballs when you're, um, when you're designing your layout. But that's what's great about making the track plan is you have at least a idea of what you want to do and then you can already kind of put uh, themes of what you want to do on different parts of the layout. And then you'll know how they kind of interact with each other. And just like that, you're on the right track. I'll see you real soon when you come back. Thank you so much for watching this episode of the College Railroader. Hope to see you again for more tips and tricks.